Alright, so I'm Christian, he's James, and we decided to do our project on op optimizing traffic signals. So we can all agree that traffic is like a big problem and nobody likes it. So there's a lot of costs with it, such as like a cost of time, time to like wait in traffic, um, a physical cost, and cost to the environment. Um, so some of the current issues that there are are um, traffic fluidity, which is interrupted on roads with many stops. There's pollution when the cars stop the gas uh, just lets out and it pollutes the environment. And gas can be wasted, so that costs you money. Um, so some of the hopes for this project is that we can go through and either work to develop like a vehicle to infrastructure, infrastructure being all the different traffic signals and stoplights, things of the sort. And the vehicle would be basically a, a device you have in your car that can communicate with the infrastructure of the traffic lights to let the traffic lights know where your car is located and how far away it is at any given light. Because um, currently the way it's set up is the primary sensors are located at the stopping area to the light. And so when the light's red, your car has to decelerate, come to complete stop, and go through but the problem with that is if there's no other cars coming from either direction, then you're essentially just decelerating for no reason. You're forced to wait. Whereas if you implement a sensing system that can detect that the vehicle is coming earlier than the immediate stop, then it allows the traffic signal to optimize the time so you don't have to decelerate as much. And if no other vehicles are approaching, then you can just go right through it. So yeah, um, our main hypothesis, what we want to do is install a device in cars to communicate with the traffic lights or change the function of the traffic lights to improve traffic congestion. Um, some other methods we're thinking of, they have like on the roads right now, they have the sensor, uh, like only one car can go on the sensor at the front of the stoplight. We were thinking like maybe possibly move the sensor back so you can sense what, uh, if there's cars coming in all directions so the traffic can know which light to turn green for who so you don't have to wait and stop but that is a costly um, idea. We are also thinking there could be smart traffic signals so it can see um, around the road and help and then um, the one we want to really do is the device in the car which can communicate with the stoplight and um, you can like uh, not have to wait or whatever and then the, we also thought of a possible smartphone app because everyone has smartphones to do a similar job. And um, mostly what this does right now, because there's similar technology because this is like the way that we're moving. You have like uh, Apple, Google, all these major tech companies currently developing like self-driving cars, even like NVIDIA is working on software that allows it to do it. And so what we're looking at is once this becomes like a common protocol, well that's great for the self-driving cars. However, it still leaves a lot of vehicles that are currently being made now or older vehicles that are on the road that don't have that luxury. And so once uh, the newer cars do develop like a built-in system for the vehicle infrastructure, this would ideally allow some of the benefits for older cars. And then the relevance biology is mostly that uh, it would help to reduce the air pollution. Because I know in a lot of like major cities or major areas where cars are constantly stopping and going, then that causes a lot of unnecessary vehicle emissions when it can be lowered and optimized so that the cars either don't have to come to a complete stop at any given time or because then it, they don't have to accelerate as fast and then it just allows the local environment to that area to be healthier for some of the goals we wanted to achieve were reduce wasting your time just sitting at a traffic light when there's no other cars coming around, lower the amount of gas you need to use when you're driving on the road, and for safety issues, we want to minimize vehicle on vehicle accidents, um, and we want to improve air quality. And so this is a, it's a full scale project. It takes a lot of different uh, parties coming together to do such a thing. Like, 
you already have like there's different companies that produce different um, like stop like stop lights and the different sensors. It's depending on where you are in the company uh, in the country, different companies like produce those things. So in order to make one common protocol, it's a large scale effort. So we have to help reach out to a lot of those companies to work with them so we can get like one common protocol. And then also with you want to talk to like um, the government, hopefully get their backing on this because all of the traffic signals are controlled by the government. So and those are our sources. Okay. Last yes. Thank you. There's a lot of arms. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you said the way this would work is that you basically would be like in your car that would be the traffic lights. There's a lot of cars that are still being driven in the 90s or the 2000s. So obviously this is, um, is this going, uh, for order for this to work, would every car have that one of these? It's one of those things where if you don't have it, then you're kind of left at the, the win of the current system. But if you did introduce this device to the car, then you wouldn't be able to have the benefit of using it. So it's one of those things like, if you don't get it, then it doesn't really change what the, your current system, but if you do get it, then it opens you to. So is, are you saying is, let's say there's a new system with the sensor that fetched earlier, so you have to wait the stoplight and no it's coming. I get that. Does that mean um, the fallback be for those who don't have that, it's just still relying on old sensors underneath the road? And so you know, those sensors would communicate to those who are okay. So it wouldn't have to be that everybody has to do it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, like when you say like a Bluetooth device, it's not going to be actually installed in the cars because like the old cars won't have it. It'll be like a device. Side. Yeah, like you know how you open your garage door with a button, it'd be like that. Yeah. Um, there's actually a company that's working out of St. Pete you know, that's actually installed one for a camera-based version of that, uh, which is going to be a major competitor, especially since they're doing this experimentally. And do you mean, do you mean on the traffic signal itself, or they, the, they've the been vehicle? installing them at very um, what is it, traffic concentrated areas mm -hmm. and with great results? So how do you guys kind of compete with that? Having quite thought of that because we did not know that. But. I think I think it's one of those things where like it's a good idea and concept. However, uh, looking at it now with where we are, it's kind of us looking at it now. We're kind of on like the the back end. Like this would have been really in, like great stuff to go through and look at like five years ago. But now as other like self driving cars and those are becoming more prevalent, not necessarily yet, but within the coming like ten years, then uh, just kind of uh, a downfall that we had when we began looking into this idea. Okay, I, I just wanted to say that there's a reason that traffic lights are structured the way they are and that they're not to be tampered with and things like that because they are, <coughs> a lot of collisions can happen. So the main concern basically is if you put a device in a vehicle that says if condition X is fulfilled, then turn my light green. I could see a lot of ways that uh, a person could essentially tamper with it and fill, fulfill that condition maliciously so that the light turns and causes collisions and things like that. So my point is basically that the, having the control of the lights turning in the hands of the driver is not such a good thing. And maybe that the cameras or something like that that can't be tampered with as badly would be a better solution. Yeah, that's the immediate thing that I would see. Like we said, like it was going to be like a smart like um, traffic light, so it's going to work. The traffic light is going to be like fixed too, so you can't just oh press this and now my light turns green. It's going to have the traffic light's going to uh, think about the other drivers too as well. So I mean, um, like they, like I said, it's kind of that tra traffic lights right now. They're worth so to avoid um, car to car collision. That way, because they give out a certain amount of time. So one vehicle just completely stop. So they when they all are finishing, the other one doesn't start immediately. If you manage to do it, you're cutting the time. And I know many people, I know in Miami, many people cut off the light because they're running out of time. So they just like run with it. How are you gonna avoid that problem with the with this type of technology? And also, it's also really, really vulnerable because you should say it's gonna be like a little controller to that will connect to the satellite. It, that type of controller is really easy to temper 
because many people can access any type of gar uh, universal garage door and hack it so it can enter any other people's house. So it would be, it's almost a, the same thing. So how would you provide for that? I don't think we'd specifically, I think it was just, we have like right right ones like yet. Said, but I don't think we'd use the same channels. It'd be more of, um, um, similar to Bluetooth, but not necessarily, but of course we want to go through and take a look at it to make sure it is secure, because you have to more people mess it. But the, the system is intended to be the benefit of the whole, and so we don't want to uh, make sure it's